Welcome to this one-hour English lesson. Today, you're going to learn English with the news. We're going to read two different news articles together, so you can learn a lot of advanced vocabulary, complex grammar, and correct pronunciation. Let's get started. First, I'll read the headline: Harry and Meghan Spotify podcast deal with couple ends. Now, let's talk about the article. A joint statement from Harry and Meghan's company and the streaming giant. The streaming giant is who? Based on the headline, who's the streaming giant? That's Spotify. So Spotify is the streaming giant. I wrote that here for you. And just know that if you were to say this, the company and Spotify. You wouldn't say the Spotify because Spotify is a proper name and we don't put an article in front of a proper name unless the name includes the article. But in this case, the company is just called Spotify, not the Spotify. Company and Spotify, the streaming giant, said they had mutually agreed to part ways. So mutually means that both parties said, yes, I want this. Yes, I want this. That is mutual. Now, to part ways is another way of saying to end a relationship. You can use this in a business relationship, such as the relationship with... Harry and Meghan and Spotify, but we also commonly use this in personal romantic relationships. For example, let's say Fred is talking to his friend and he could say, my wife and I have decided to part ways. And then the person will say, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Or, oh, what happened? Depending on how well you know Fred, if you're going to ask follow-up questions or not. But if Fred and his wife are parting ways, it's another way of saying they're getting divorced. But it sounds a little less devastating than getting divorced. So we're just parting ways. Now here you could also say have decided to part ways and then you could add it was mutual. It was mutual. Seeing that our decision to part ways to separate or to divorce to end our relationship was mutual. It was mutual. It representing our decision to part ways. It was mutual. So they both said, yes, I want to. Yes, I want to. It was mutual. Now you could also say it wasn't mutual. And this would imply that either Fred or his wife didn't want to part ways and wanted to remain in the relationship. Let's continue. Spotify confirmed it was not renewing Megan's podcast archetypes. Listen to my pronunciation here. Archetypes. There are three sounds. We have arc. K. This ends on a K sound. Arc. This is just a schwa sound as we call it in our throat. Uh, uh, arca. Arca. And then the word types. Archetypes. Archetypes. The name of the podcast is archetype, but this is also a noun in English. An archetype, this is a perfect example of something. For example, Steve Jobs was the archetype of a leader. I'm using the verb to be in the past simple because Steve Jobs is dead. So we use the verb to be in the past simple when someone has died. Now notice here, I have my noun archetype, the archetype, which means the perfect example of a leader. So the archetype of, and then whatever it's the example of. For example, the Empire State Building is the archetype of a skyscraper. So that could be another example, the archetype 
of and then whatever the category is. So this is the name of the podcast, but it also has a meaning in the English language. Same spelling, same pronunciation. So the podcast archetypes, which ran for 12 episodes from August 2022 for a second series. So going back, Spotify confirmed it's not renewing the podcast, which ran for 12 episodes from August 2022 for a second series. Now notice they're using the verb to run. We use this when we're talking about the length of time that a TV series, or in this case, a podcast is available to the public. Let's take the popular TV show Friends, which is no longer on the air, but you can still watch the old episodes of it. So we could say, Friends ran from, and I have no idea when Fran, Friends ran from. Do you? So we need the the date or the year when Friends started on TV and then also when it ended. So I'm just going to say, <laughs> I think it was in the 90s, right? 1992 <laughs> to 19. 1998. This is not at all accurate. I have no idea if this is correct at all, but friends ran from, so this is the, the date, the year that the show became publicly available and then when it stopped as well. So we use the verb ran. Now, don't worry about taking all of these notes because I summarize everything in a free lesson PDF. So you can look in the description or the comment section for the link to download the free lesson PDF. Let's continue. The contract was estimated to be worth $25 million in late 2020. So at this time in late 2020. Late 2020 would represent later in the year. So January, February, March, that would be early 2020. And then July, August would be mid 2020. And then November, December would be late 2020. I wrote that here for you. And also notice the preposition because you use in with a year in 2022 or in with a month as well. I'm going on vacation in August, but with a specific date, you would use on. So you could say, I'm going on vacation. I'm going on vacation in August, or you could say in 2024. I'm going on vacation on August 4th. So here when we have a specific date, so the month and the date, then you would use on. We can use in for the year and in for the month as well. So pay attention to these small words, prepositions, articles, because they're extremely important to be considered fluent and advanced in English. Let's continue. The podcast deal was one of the major commercial agreements the couple entered into after quitting royal duties and relocating to the U.S. in 2020. So notice you enter into an agreement. The sentence structure is slightly different because they're talking about the agreement first and then they're saying the agreement the couple entered into, which you can absolutely do. So let me write this for you. So the agreement the couple entered into was worth 25 million, for example. Otherwise, you could start with a subject. We entered into an agreement worth 25 million. So pay attention to that sentence structure, but notice that you enter into and then an agreement, whether it comes before or after. So let me highlight there. So here we have agreement, but then the enter into is separated. 
after quitting. Notice here we have your verb in ing, the gerund verb, because after is a preposition. So of course you need your gerund. So we have preposition plus gerund verb. And after is our preposition. After quitting royal duties and relocating to the US in 2020. So when you relocate, it means you change your location from location A to location B. So you might say, I'm going to relocate in August. I'm going to relocate on August 4th. Same thing. So you're going to change your location from A to B. Now you can use that for yourself personally where you live. You could also use that for your company or even a restaurant. Oh, my favorite restaurant relocated. And now they're all the way on the other side of town. And maybe before they were very close to you, but then they relocated and they're far away. So you're not going to go, even though it was your favorite restaurant. I wrote that example here for you. My favorite restaurant relocated, changed its location from A to B, and now it's a 40 minute drive. Notice here, 40 minute, there's no S, right? Because 40 minute is an adjective that describes drive, which is why there's no S, even though it's plural. So this is an adjective, 40 minute. I'll just put that here for you, 40 minute, and this is an adjective. I hope you're enjoying this lesson. If you enjoy learning English with the news, then I want to tell you about my premium training program, the Finally Fluent Academy. This is where we study native English speakers on TV, YouTube, movies, and the news so you can improve your listening skills of fast English, advance your vocabulary, learn complex grammar, and you'll have me as your personal coach. So you can look in the description for a link on how to join. Let's continue. Archetypes, so remember, this is the name of Megan's podcast. Archetypes saw Megan speak to high profile figures like Serena Williams and Mariah Carey about stereotypes leveled against women. In December, so here our preposition in, on December 4th, for example, but in December, Archetypes won the top podcast award at the People's Choice Award in Los Angeles. So clearly it was a popular podcast. At the time, what does this represent? Well, our last time reference was in December around the time of the People's Choice Award. So that would be at the time, the last time that is referenced. At the time, Megan wrote, I loved digging my hands into the process. Notice here she said dig into, dig into the process. When you dig into something, this is a phrasal verb and it simply means to learn or to uncover information. So for example, we need to dig into why our sales are down. So we need to just review the information, review the sales and try to learn why or uncover why something is happening. So she's trying to learn about the process. I loved digging my hands into the process. And notice here, the verbs are all in the ing form. That's because Megan is saying, I love, and love is a verb that uses the gerund. So you have love because it's a verb of preference and following love, we use the gerund. I loved digging into the process. I loved sitting up late at night. I loved working on the writing. So that's why all the verbs are in the gerund form because they all follow I loved but she's just not repeating, I love digging in, I love sitting up. So just to avoid sounding repetitive, she's simply stating the verbs. Digging into the process, sitting up, 
late at night in bed, working on the writing and creative. I'll write that as a note for you. Let's continue. When the agreement with Spotify, the streaming giant, with Spotify was first announced, it was billed as a relationship which would produce several series. But in the end, only one materialized. So here it was billed as, this isn't a very common expression, so I'm not going to highlight it for you, but it simply means they they labeled it as or they described it as. That would be the closest one. I don't hear build as very frequently, so I don't recommend using that. I would say it was described as a relationship which would produce several series. So series of the podcast. A series is made up of a collection of episodes. So on TV, a series would have a number of seasons and there would be a group of episodes within each season. So maybe there's season one, and there's 12 episodes, season two, 12 episodes, and they release one season every year or one season every six months, for example. So that's what this podcast was supposed to be. It was described as, but in the end, so in the end, this is talking about in reality, what actually happened in the end, only one materialized. In this case, materialize is another way of saying happened. Only one happened. Only one was actually produced and aired to the public. So, but in the end, so talking about the reality of what you did compared to what your plan was. For example, I wanted to go to the party, but in the end, I stayed home. So in the end simply is referring to the reality of what happened, whereas this was your plan or your expected result, what you anticipated. And then this is in the end, this is the reality. But in the end, I stayed home. Let's continue. American media reports suggest the royal couple failed to meet the productivity benchmark required by Spotify. A benchmark is something that you're evaluated against. So perhaps on a language exam, the benchmark is getting eight out of 10 to be successful. So that's what you're evaluated against. If you get seven out of 10, well, then you failed because you're below the benchmark. And then if you get nine out of 10, well, then you succeeded. You're above the benchmark. So the reports suggest that they didn't meet that benchmark. Now, but the reports simply suggest it. It doesn't mean it's true. So when you say the reports suggest, there's definitely an element of uncertainty. It's not a fact for sure. So when someone suggests something, they're just saying it. It's not 100% true. So the reports suggest the royal couple failed to meet the productivity benchmark required by Spotify and therefore wouldn't be receiving the full value of the contract. Since splitting, remember there was that more polite way to describe it you learned at the beginning. Since splitting from the royal family, we could say since parting ways from the royal family. So here, they're not talking about the contract at this moment. They're not talking about Spotify. They're talking about when Harry and Meghan decided to part ways from the rest of the royal family, the king, the queen, and then the brother, William, as well. So to part ways is the more polite, softer, gentler way of saying it. And then splitting is another way, a more blunt way of saying it, splitting. So whole and then split. So that's a, a casual way we can say 
that in a relationship. Remember Fred and he said his wife uh, and him are parting ways and it was mutual. Fred could also say my wife and I split up is the phrasal verb to split up is another way of saying separating, getting divorced, or simply ending a relationship. So someone could ask you, oh, are you still with Tony or Maria? And that's your boyfriend or girlfriend. And you can say, no, we split up. We split up. So we ended our relationship. We split up. And then you can say we split up in, in January <laughs> or we split up on January 5th if you want to be very specific. Remember, we are practicing our preposition. So that's a very casual, blunt way of saying it. And then a softer, more delicate way of saying it would be, we decided to part ways, but it was mutual. <laughs> we both agreed to it, but it was mutual. Or you can just be blunt and say, we split up, we split up. So since splitting from the royal family, Harry and Meghan have looked to capitalize on their global fame. So when you capitalize on something, you try to get the benefit of it and the of it being their global fame. So they have all of this fame and then Harry and Meghan could be discussing, well, how can we capitalize on that? How can we benefit from that? So to capitalize on something. Notice that preposition on because in my example, I also say it said, how can we benefit from it? Benefit from capitalize on. So prepositions in English is just a matter of memorization. Have looked to capitalize on their global fame in order to become financially independent. That, so their attempt to capitalize on their global fame in order to become financially independent, all of that is summarized as that. So that representing this last point. That has included a multi-million dollar content deal with Netflix and Harry's huge contract with Penguin Books, which has already produced his autobiography, Spare. And actually, I have another lesson on Learn English with the News where we review when Harry's book, Spare, became available to the public. So you can look in the description for the link on that video as well. And that's the end of our article. So what I'll do now is I will read the article from start to finish. And this time you can focus on my pronunciation. So let's do that now. Harry and Meghan, Spotify podcast deal with couple ends. A joint statement from Harry and Meghan's company and the streaming giant said they had mutually agreed to part ways. Spotify confirmed it was not renewing Megan's podcast, Archetypes, which ran for 12 episodes from August 2022 for a second series. The contract was estimated to be worth $25 million in late 2020. The podcast deal was one of the major commercial agreements the couple entered into after quitting royal duties and relocating to the U.S. in 2020. Archetypes saw Megan speak to high-profile figures like Serena Williams and Mariah Carey about stereotypes leveled against women. In December, Archetypes won the Top Podcast Award at the People's Choice Award in Los Angeles. At the time, Megan wrote, I love digging my hands into the process, sitting up late at night in bed, working on the writing and creative. When the agreement with Spotify was first announced, it was billed as a relationship which would produce several series, but in the end, only one materialized. 
American media reports suggest the royal couple failed to meet the productivity benchmark required by Spotify and therefore wouldn't be receiving the full value of the contract. Since splitting from the royal family, Harry and Meghan have looked to capitalize on their global fame in order to become financially independent. That has included a multi-million dollar content deal with Netflix and Harry's huge contract with Penguin Books, which has already produced his autobiography, Spare. Amazing job with that article. Now we're going to move on to the next article. Feel free to take a pause, get a cup of tea if you like, and let's continue on. I'm sure you recognize Prince Harry and you may know that he just released a memoir called Spare. That's what we're talking about today and I'm sure that's what many people around the world are talking about right now. So let's read the headline. Prince Harry's memoir, Spare, which captures the ugly side of royal life, hits bookshelves. Now let's talk about the title of this memoir. A memoir is simply a book that talks about your own experience or memories, a memoir. Now spare in English is an adjective. It's an adjective and it means extra or additional. That's not in use. So not in use. So that means that's available. That's not in use. That's available. For example, I could say, do you have an umbrella? Now, if I wanted to be more specific, I could say, do you have a spare umbrella? Remember as an adjective, it comes before the noun and it just lets you know that I don't want your umbrella if you're using it. I want an additional umbrella that you're not using. So you might say, do you, do you have a spare pen? <laughs> if you're in a class and you're taking notes or you want to take notes and you don't have a pen, you could turn to someone and say, do you have a spare pen? So I would guess that spare in this context is referring to the fact that he is like the extra member of the royal family, not in use because there's no way he's ever going to become king because his older brother, William, is going to be king. So he's like the spare. That's what I would guess. I don't know if that's true or not. Now let's talk about this. Hits bookshelves. Hits bookshelves. So hit is our verb, to hit. It's being used in a different way, of course, because hit is this. That's the verb to hit. But to hit a bookshelf, when a product hits a location, it simply means to become available, to become available. So I'll write that out because it's used in the context of when a product hits a location, it becomes available. So you might ask, let's say a new iPhone was released or is going to be released. You might ask, when does the new iPhone hit the store, hit the shelves, hit the internet? Cause you can buy it online, right? Movies. When does that new movie hit the theaters become available in the theaters. So it's very commonly used. So when does his or his new memoir became available? Hit the bookshelves. All right, let's continue on. Prince Harry's memoir was released Tuesday. This is when it hit bookshelves Tuesday, not only offering Right now, when I see this, not only, I know that later on in the sentence, they're going to say, but also. Not only, but also, because those two go together. So let's find out where they say that. Not only offering new details on the British royal family's bitter internal feud after days of bombshell revelations and promotional interviews. Whoa, that was quite long, actually. 
Ah, but also describing. So we use this expression not only, but also when we want to talk about two different benefits or features or points about one thing. So you might say the book not only talks about the royal family, but also talks about his relationship with Meghan Markle, his wife, for example, not only, not only, and then you have your clause, but also, and then you have your second clause, your second point. So that's a very advanced structure. It's a nice structure. So you can practice using that in your own. We use this a lot in written English, but you can absolutely use it in spoken English as well. So we have not only but also let's also look at this bitter, 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 bitter is an adjective. When someone is bitter, they're angry or upset about something that they just can't forget about. So let's say Last week or two weeks ago, a friend didn't invite you to their party. So you're angry and upset. You were angry and upset at the time, but two weeks later, you're still angry and upset. So the anger and the feelings of being upset have lasted because of that event. That's when you would say, she's bitter. She's been angry and upset for a long <laughs> time. Angry and upset about a past event, I'll say. And you're still angry and upset now. So the family's bitter feud. A feud is a fight. It's another way of saying fight. Their feud. I do hear this quite a lot in the media to describe when two people are fighting. It could be a family. It could be within a company. It could be friends, celebrities. I often hear them describe it as a feud in the media. But honestly, in, in my own speech, in speech with my friends, movies, I don't hear that a lot. It's I hear it more specifically in the media. In everyday context, we just say fight. The family's bitter internal fight. After days of bombshell revelations. Now, a bombshell is a announcement that has a really big impact. Because a bomb, imagine a bomb. <laughs> Right? So imagine you deliver news to someone and poof, there's a big impact of that. In this case, a revelation is information that wasn't available, secret information, and now it is available. And by describing it as a bombshell, poof, it had a big impact. So that's a bombshell revelation. Just information being shared that has a very big impact. Let's continue on. But also describing how he fell headlong in love with his future wife, Meghan Markle. So this was quite a long paragraph. And then I summarized it in this very short paragraph. The media does that. They like to use additional adjectives to make it sound really important or entertaining when you can say the same thing in a more simple way. Okay, let's continue on. While many of the details from the book titled Spare have already been reported, its release at midnight Monday local time will allow the public to get their hands on a copy of a memoir filled with glimpses into a rarefied family riven by disagreement and distrust. When you get your hands on something. So notice the sentence structure. Our verb is the verb get. 
one's hands. The one in this case is the subject they, so it's there as the possessive pronoun to get one's hands, plural hands, on is our preposition and then something. When you get your hands on something, it just means that you have it. And we usually use this when the something might be difficult to to obtain or there's some sort of significance in obtaining. Let's say there were only 10 iPhones that hit the shelves and I was able to get my hands on one. I was able to obtain one and that is special or significant because there aren't many available. So here's the example sentence. And remember, get one's hand. So you need to match the possessive pronoun to the subject. So I put that here for you as well. So you remember one's hands. Let's continue on. Okay, with glimpses into, glimpses into. When you glimpse at something, you look at something quickly and you don't necessarily see the whole thing. You just see a part of it. So let's say I'm driving. I might glimpse at a billboard. A billboard is just a poster that you see on a highway. So I'm driving and I glimpse at it. I can't stare at it or look at it for a long time because I'm driving. I have to pay attention to the road. So I might glimpse at it quickly. So to look at something quickly. So that, let me write that for you. So to glimpse, to glimpse at something is to look at something quickly. So in this context, if we get a glimpse into the royal family, it means we get to look at the royal family, but only briefly because we only get to see what the memoir shares with us, right? So that's what it's trying to let us know. We get to look at the royal family, but only a little bit. Rarified is an adjective. And as an adjective, it means not ordinary. So of course the royal family is not ordinary. They're extraordinary. They're rarefied. So we use this as an adjective to describe the family. They're rarefied, the rarefied family. So if there is a company that is quite different from ordinary companies, you might say it's a rarefied company. For example, I don't think you'll use this adjective too much in your vocabulary, but just to understand the article, a rarefied family riven by disagreement, riven by is another way of saying divided by, because you have your family as a whole, the family is not arguing they're together, but if the family is divided riven by, it means the disagreement caused the family to separate, to become divided, riven by. So this is another way of saying divided by, divided by disagreement. Let's continue on. Some Britons flocked to bookshops overnight to be among the first to buy a copy of Spare. When you flock to a location, it describes when a large number of people go to a location, generally at or around the same time. So you might say that people flocked to the Apple store when the new iPhone hit the shelves. When the new iPhone hit the shelves, they flock too. So a large number of people, and they generally went around the same time because the iPhone was released at a specific date and time. And that's when everybody went. So to flock to a large number of people, let's continue on. 
Some of the book's most eye-catching passages include allegations that Harry's brother and heir to the throne, Prince William, physically attacked him during a dispute, that his stepmother, Camilla, the queen consort, leaked private conversations to bolster her reputation, and that his father, King Charles III, had pleaded with his sons to not make his final years a misery with their arguing. So remember, we learned another word, another word for fighting. We could say with their arguing, with their fighting, with their feuding. That could be another word, with their feuding. So I'll leave that there. When something is eye-catching, it means that your eye is drawn to it. So your eye naturally goes to it. It is more interesting or it stands out more. It gets your attention. That's eye-catching. So the passages, passage is just right now we're reading a passage of this article. So it's a piece of the article. article. And eye-catching is most interesting parts, passages, most Interesting. Now it could be another adjective, interesting, engaging, most entertaining, for example, but I'll just say most interesting. An allegation is when someone accuses someone else. You did this. That's my allegation against you. So Harry had allegations against his brother, William. You did this. That's what he said in the book. So he physically attacked him. So physical means that there was violence involved. He touched him. He maybe hit him. We don't know, but there's some sort of physicalness. Attacked him during a dispute. Dispute is another word for fight during a fight or an argument or again, a feud, (laughs) we could say. Camilla leaked. When you leak something, it's when you make it available, but it should not be available. So these private conversations, they're private for a reason. But if you leak them, it's when I say, oh, here's the conversation and I give it to you, but you shouldn't have it. So that is the verb to leak. This is a verb. I know it's a verb because it's conjugated in the past simple. So to make information available when it shouldn't be because it's private information. It's not supposed to be public. To bolster her reputation. Bolster in this sense is another way of saying to improve, to increase, to bolster her reputation, to improve. Improve or increase, but in this case, it's improve because you don't necessarily increase a reputation, but you can improve it. A lot of people don't like Camilla, right? She has a negative reputation. She wants to improve it, to bolster it. It. Now, I think to plead with someone is please don't, please don't. That's to plead with someone. To plead with his sons not to make his final years a misery. A misery would be terrible. A misery with their arguing, feuding, disputing, or fighting. Let's continue on. The publication of such a frank and revealing account is a near unprecedented event in the centuries old history of Britain's royals, who, as Harry has pointed out, double as both a family and national institution. The book has led to questions over whether it could deal lasting damage to the monarchy, even asking whether its future existence is now less certain. Okay, a frank and revealing account. Frank is another way of saying honest and honest and revealing. I'll just write this first. Honest revealing is when you share a lot of details. So that comes from the verb to reveal, which means to share with details. 
So to reveal, to reveal a lot of details or information to share, share a lot of details or information. And then Frank means honest. An unprecedented event is an event that doesn't happen very often. It's never happened. It's unprecedented. Now, unprecedented on its own means that it's never happened before. But when you say near unprecedented, it means that it's almost. So near means almost in this sense. So it's implying that it's almost never happened before. And the event is sharing so much information about the royal family publicly, leaking that information, giving you a glimpse into the private life of the royals. Okay. And our final paragraph, Harry has said that he still wants a reconciliation with his family. When you have a reconciliation, it's when, so two parties, they're disputing, they're feuding, they're fighting. But if they reconcile, which is the verb to reconcile, is when they come back together as a family. So right now there's Prince Harry here and there's Prince William, Prince Charles, or King Charles here. They're divided, right? So to bring them back together, that's to reconcile. Reconciliation is just the noun of it, to reconcile. We use this a lot in a legal context because if a husband and wife, they separate, which is a legal event when they no longer want to be married. But then if they reconcile, it means they do want to be married again and they do not end their marriage. That's reconcile. So to become friendly again after a dispute, to reconcile. So he wants to reconcile. He wants a reconciliation with his family and believes one is possible, but asked whether he had burned his bridges with his father and brother. To burn one's bridge is an idiom. So imagine right now if I'm here and I want to get there and there's a bridge, I can easily go back and forth between the two, right? But if I burn the bridge, the bridge is no longer there. I can't get there, right? So it's when you act in a way that makes reconciliation impossible or act in a way that it's impossible to get to something else. So a lot of people are advised when you quit your job, don't burn your bridges because you want to be able to go back to that job in the future. How could you burn your bridges? Well, if you tell your boss, you were the worst employer I ever had. I hated working for you. You're a jerk. And you do something that makes it so your employer would never want to work with you again. So that bridge to that job is gone, right? So here I've added the definition and the example. Don't burn your bridges when you quit. So be very polite, friendly, because you may need a reference from your company or you may want to go back to that company in the future. So that's the article. I'm sure there's a lot more interesting details about this new memoir, Spare. Are you going to read it? Share it in the comments if you plan on reading this memoir. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the article from start to finish in full so you can practice along with my pronunciation. Let's do that now. Prince Harry's memoir, Spare, which captures the ugly side of royal life, hits bookshelves. Prince Harry's memoir was released Tuesday, not only offering new details on the British royal family's bitter internal feud after days of bombshell revelations and promotional interviews, but also describing how he fell headlong in love with his future wife, Meghan Markle. 
While many of the details from the book titled Spare have already been reported, its release at midnight Monday local time will allow the public to get their hands on a copy of a memoir filled with glimpses into a rarefied family riven by disagreement and distrust. Some Britons flock to bookshops overnight to be among the first to buy a copy of Spare. Some of the book's most eye-catching passages include allegations that Harry's brother and heir to the throne, Prince William, physically attacked him during a dispute, that his stepmother, Camilla, the queen consort, leaked private conversations to bolster her reputation, and that his father, King Charles III, had pleaded with his sons to not make his final years a misery with their arguing. The publication of such a frank and revealing account is a near unprecedented event in the centuries-old history of Britain's royals, who, as Harry has pointed out, double as both a family and national institution. The book has led to questions over whether it could deal lasting damage to the monarchy, even asking whether its future existence is now less certain. Harry has said that he still wants a reconciliation with his family and believes one is possible, but asked whether he had burned his bridges with his father and brother. Amazing job with this lesson! If you're up for it, I have another lesson right here that I know you're going to love. And make sure you get your free speaking guide where I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. You can get it from my website right here. And when you're ready, get started with your next lesson.